Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> so I've been very eager to make a video over the last couple of weeks about um, my story about vacuum cleaner collecting. So I think I'm going to do this kind of in a time frame kind of a deal here. So it was about 1999 when I started to become interested with vacuum cleaners. And I found it documented in a baby book that my mom saved for me that it really was about that time that I became interested with vacuum cleaners. Um, it's also about that time uh, after my mom had told my aunt about this interesting fascination of mine that she requested to have a few videotapes sent to my house of four different models of Phantom branded vacuum cleaners. Um, they were infomercial tapes that were designed to try to get you to buy the machine after you watch the tape. And I remember my aunt telling me that she actually had to request each video under a different name in order to be able to get all the videos sent to my address for free. And when those videos came in the mail, uh, I would watch them all the time, almost constantly, to the point where one of the tapes actually broke. Uh, and I also was able to recite some of the lines from the infomercial tapes because I had watched them so much. And that really, not only really uh, set in stone my interest for vacuum cleaners, that also, I think, got me hooked on the Phantom brand of vacuum cleaners specifically. And from that point on, I always wanted to have a Phantom vacuum of my own. Now, they were discontinued only about a year after I got these videotapes. Uh, so it would be a while yet before I would get my own because af because obviously you couldn't get one brand new after 2001. So a few years after that, I didn't really get anywhere with this fascination other than whenever we went to a store like Walmart, Target, or Sears, we would always have to go to the vacuum aisle. And my mom told me when I was really little, I would actually get upset if we didn't go to the vacuum aisle. I distinctly remember one of my favorite places to go for vacuums was Sears because Sears always had the best selection. Sears always had the best selection because they also were able to sell the Kenmore line. Because as a recently, uh, or up until recently, Kenmore was exclusive to Sears. And it was in 2007 that when we moved to a new house, I bought a vacuum from Walmart to use in the basement where my rabbit was. And I would use this vacuum around the house as well. And we would also use it uh, when my mom taught Sunday school, I would vacuum the rooms after Sunday school was over with it. And I still have that vacuum, I just don't use it very much just because it was a cheap vacuum and the motor at this point is probably not very long for this world and I just didn't want it to break. For many years, I really thought I was the only vacuum cleaner collector, or I should say the only person interested by vacuums because I really couldn't consider myself much of a collector at that point. I only had like a couple cordless vacuums in that Eureka and that really, that really was it at that time. When I saw the Discovery Channel segment with Cal Critchbaum, I would say that probably was one of the turning points for my interest in vacuum cleaners because that was the first time I'd ever seen anybody else on television or any other, any other place who was interested by vacuums. 
It was also about that time that YouTube started to get very popular and I started to watch YouTube videos of other people who were interested by vacuums, specifically people who were interested by phantom vacuums. And I remember that um, a few YouTubers in particular, I really was quite um, interested by um, in regards to seeing their videos. And a few of those YouTubers are still present today on the site. Um, and I do remember back when YouTube had a messaging system, uh, I would actually message periodically a few vacuum cleaner collectors here and there, just because I, I was just interest, so interested by it and, um, really just wanted to get to know them more. Another turning point, um, is really... Uh, about the time that I really truly started to collect vacuum cleaners and that would have been the end of 2009 So I was in sixth grade and I saw a listing for a phantom thunder on Craigslist for $20 I felt a little weird about first about asking my mom if we could get it But I did ask her and with a little bit of persuasion we did go get it and um Needed quite a bit of work, but after I got some things fixed on it, I would actually use that around our house uh, to vacuum with. And even periodically used it to vacuum other areas as well. I remember bringing it to my aunt's uncle's house to vacuum. I even remember bringing it to um, my Boy Scout troop meeting uh, to use there as well. Um, and uh, that really was the first vacuum that I ever had for my collection. And I actually have it right here for you guys to see. Um, still works, but it does need a little bit of help. Um, it's it just, the motor needs to be serviced in it, so I'll probably have that done at some point. But, I mean, what can you say for a vacuum cleaner that you've had for 12 years that you got for $20 on Craigslist? I mean, hey, it still works. And those videotapes that I was talking about are actually right here, believe it or not. I still have some of them. The one for the Thunder the Cyclone XT and the Fury. Uh, they all still play, but I don't play them much anymore because they've just been played so much and I just don't want them to get destroyed. Um, about eight months after I got this Thunder, I saw a listing for Phantom Fury on eBay and I begged my mom to let me get it and I did eventually get it. I think it was about $60. This was right before um, Phantom started to go for crazy money. So um, you could still get Phantoms relatively cheap on eBay at this time. Um, I remember the day I got it because that was the same day as my cousin's graduation. And when we got home, the Phantom was sitting there in the box from eBay. And I remember opening it up and using it. This was really at that point. I didn't, I'm not sure if I really thought at the time I was truly collecting vacuums other than the fact that I really wanted to have some phantom vacuums. I would say a few months after that, when I got uh, my third vacuum from my collection, my Kirby Heritage 2, I think that was probably closer to the point where I really thought that maybe I would actually truly start collecting vacuum cleaners because that was the first vacuum that I got that was not a Phantom that I planned to keep. And I did have that vacuum for about five years. Um, that being said, uh, it was a pretty slow process. Like for the first like two years or so that I collected, um, I didn't really have any more than 15 or 20 vacuum cleaners. Another turning point for me was in 2011, 
because I picked up a Hoover Wind Tunnel Ultra at a garage sale. I think I paid five or ten dollars for it, somewhere around there. And a few months later, I resold it on Craigslist, I think for forty dollars. That was a turning point because it was at that point that I realized that I could actually fund my vacuum hobby by reselling some of the vacuums that I buy. And I think looking back, my parents slowly became a little more comfortable with me collecting vacuums, not just through the passage of time, but also because they saw I was making money selling some of these vacuums. And after that point, uh, selling vacuums is, in addition to buying them, really, really became the main thing I would do in my free time. And I really started to not only just collect, but buy vacuums and just resell them. And I remember the second vacuum I got with the intention basically of reselling was an Electrolux. I don't remember the model because it wasn't a normal model Electrolux. It was one of the refurb models from the 1980s. It looked like an Olympia one in shape, but it was painted a, a tannish color. I bought that vacuum, I think for about $10 and I sold it at a garage sale, I think for about 50 or 60 a few months later. And I really did quite well with it. Really at that point, uh, going into the year following and thereafter, I would sell, you know, good 40 or 50 vacuum cleaners every year. Uh, and I, I think really every year after that, I started to sell more and more vacuums. Primarily through Craigslist, although sometimes I would sell vacuums through garage sales. Facebook Marketplace really didn't become popular until I started college. So through most of my middle school and high school, most of my vacuum sales really mainly were through Craigslist. And vacuum cleaners really got me into other jobs as well because I got some carpet cleaning jobs uh, uh, using my mom's old Hoover steam vac carpet scrubber. And I eventually got a cleaning job from my neighbors down the street where I would back at their whole house every Friday. So, you know, you can see that vacuums are not only a hobby for me, but I've been using it as a means of income um, throughout my lower grades of school because I didn't have a regular job, but I still wanted to do something to make money on the side, and I did quite well with that. The, my, the peak for my collection probably was about 2013 or 2014. Uh, I had probably about 130 vacuums. I don't think I really realized I had that many until I physically counted each one of them. I think at that point I realized I had too many and I started to cut back and I tried to, I tried to be a little more picky about what I picked up and I also tried to be a little better about turning over vacuums quicker. Like if I knew somebody who had a vacuum, I would just sell it. Um, and you know, sometimes like if whenever I, whenever I got in a vacuum, I would try to make sure that it isn't something that I really wanted because if not, I would resell it. And I also tried to make sure that I always had vacuums that I could sell available because I, I, I think I generally always kind of had that business mindset. I've always had to make sure that I always had something I could sell to somebody because I've never wanted to miss a sale. I've sold countless vacuums to friends and family over the years. Uh, easily probably more than half the people I know have gotten at least one vacuum cleaner from me over the years. So I've done quite well with that. Probably when I started to really downsize my collection was around 2016 when I went to college. And I think it was just be, really because I was busy and I just didn't have the time to maintain and handle all these vacuum cleaners anymore. 
Plus, at the same time, I really have been trying to drive having a quality collection of vacuums over, just quantifiably having a large collection. And my interests have changed. Like when I first started vacu uh, vacuum collecting, I really, really loved phantoms. Uh, and I really wanted to primarily focus on phantoms, maybe with a select few other styles of vacuums that I'd grown up with. Like for instance, I really, Phantom and Kenmore are the two main vacuum cleaner brands that I had grown up around and liked. But as I acquired more and more vacuums, as I had more experience taking them apart and putting them back together, I started to have a better idea of what makes a good vacuum and what doesn't make a good vacuum. And it was really, as I learned more, that what I liked in a vacuum changed. When I was little, I was mostly into uprights, but as I got older, I started to become a little more interested in canister type vacuums, just because I think that they're a little more versatile. Generally speaking, as I got older, I've also gotten a bigger appreciation for older vacuums as well as high-end vacuums, just because I see in a lot of ways what was better in old vacuums, but I also see what's better in vacuums that are better made. And I think that's really, uh, I think that's why a lot of younger collectors now, a lot of them don't appreciate newer uh, vacuums that I should say higher end vacuums. And then they also don't seem to appreciate older vacuums as much just because they're just not around them and they haven't been able to experience all the wonderful things that a lot of vintage vacuum cleaners can offer. Um, but that being said, I think that everybody's interest in vacuums, even though we all share common interest, I think everybody is still different in their, in their, in, in their, what, what they like specifically about vacuums. And I think that is what makes our hobby kind of unique is that even though we all like vacuums, we all like, for the most part, different vacuums. And I think a lot of what defines our interest is to some extent the vacuums we grew up around. I grew up around Phantoms and Kenmore's. So I think that's why for that reason, I still like and appreciate Phantoms and Kenmore's. But at the same time, I've grown to be able to accept that some of those vacuums have flaws. So I'm willing to admit that maybe some of those vacuums aren't necessarily the best vacuums, but I still like them just because of the sentimental attachment that I have to those machines. And I think really when it comes to collecting, the best way to become an expert on vacuums is just to, just to take them apart, learn how they come to come apart and go back together. Um, find a good group of people who know how to work on them, who can show you new tricks on how to do different types of vacuum servicing and just have fun with it and go around to thrift stores and vacuum stores and try out different types of vacuums. Like I think part of the reason why, you know, in my opinion, I think I have a pretty well-informed opinion on vacuums is I just had so many. Like over the last 13 years, I've probably turned over, probably over a thousand vacuum cleaners. So I have a pretty good sense of, you know, what works and what doesn't work when it comes to vacuum design. And some people ask me why I collect vacuums and I still don't really have a completely definitive answer other than if you look at other types of people who collect things, you can see that, you know, I don't know, for instance, people who collect cars, they all look different, they all sound different, they're designed differently, they, they all they all have different types of stylistic aspects that reflect the period in which they were made and that's really the case for vacuums as well and i think that's what makes them very interesting uh i happen to have an interest in appliances in general i just happen to have a main interest in vacuum cleaners overall over their appliances and i like that because you can you can learn a lot of things about uh, mechanical design just by looking at different types of machinery such as vacuum cleaners. 
Another thing I like about vacuum collecting is that it's introduced me to a lot of longtime friendships. I didn't know a lot of collectors until college, but going into college, I actually did meet um, about three vacuum collectors after I had uh, after I had made contact with somebody who was interested in buying a vacuum from me. And through that one group of three people, I was able to meet so many more people. And now I can say I probably know of at least a few hundred vacuum cleaner collectors. And it's really amazing how many people really are out there if you just look hard enough for them. Um, that being said, um, I think what's really satisfying about the hobby is that I can go out to a thrift store and I'll always see something different. I'll never see the same thing, same vacuums every time I go. And I just think it's really enthralling for me to be able to just work through my mind um, all the different types of mechanical things that go into the design of a vacuum cleaner. And it also really is quite fun to be able to pick something up and either resell it or give it to somebody or find a collector who really wants it. Uh, it's very satisfying to find a vacuum cleaner that you've either been looking for for a long time or you know is obscure and you know that somebody else would want it. Um, and, you know, like I said before, we're all different. We might all collect vacuums, but we all collect different vacuums. So no two collections really are the same. You know, as I've, I, as I've said, uh, my interests in vacuums have changed a little bit. And I, along with a lot of other collectors, sometimes, you know, we might, we might have periods where we might not be collecting as much where we're trying to get rid of some and then we start taking more in. Um, I think for some people it comes in phases, but um, I still really enjoy the hobby. Personally, when I live in an apartment that doesn't have a lot of space, I try to minimize the amount of, I should say, unnecessary um, things that I have lying around. For that reason, I try to be pretty selective in what I bring in for my collection. Uh, I think, as I said before, right now, I really like canisters. And I really like vintage canisters, but for newer canisters, I like high-quality canisters. So I try to collect things that, to me, have some not only have meaning, but also have practical use, but also in, are, in what my opinion is, um, a well-designed machine. So that's really what I look for in a machine. Um, other than that, I just, I think it's a really interesting hobby and it's not something I'm ashamed of. People ask me about it all the time. When I was younger, I think people used to poke fun at it a little bit, but I think as I've matured and I think as the people who I spend time around the most have matured, I think most people come to be very interested by the hobby and are very well accepting of it. So it really isn't anything that I would be afraid to talk about to people. Um, you know, it's part of what makes me who I am as a person. And you can learn a lot of things about uh, mechanical engineering just by looking at vacuums. And it's I think it's really neat to see the stylistic trends of vacuums as they reflect every era in which they were made. So that really sums up why I'm interested in vacuum cleaners and uh, anybody who watches this video, I encourage you to, you know, consider making a little video about your story with vacuums. And I think in advance, anybody who would like to take on this opportunity. So I hope you all have a good night and thank you for watching this video.